What is going on guys? Welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn how to attach a debugger to a running Python process to interact with it if you cannot stop it or don't want to stop it. So let us get right into it. Now I want to get into this right away with a practical example because you might be asking yourself why would I ever attach a debugger to a running Python process instead of running this Python script already in debugging mode. So why would I do it after the script is running? Why would I not do it in the beginning? And of course, you're right, the best way to do it is to already start in debugging mode. But sometimes you make mistakes, sometimes you miscalculate things and you need to do it afterwards, which is what happened to me a couple of days ago, I was solving an algorithmic problem using a heuristic in Python. So I had a script running, constantly keeping track of the best solution and finding new solutions. But I wasn't printing them. And I wasn't writing them to a file or anything because I expect the script to terminate after 30 minutes. And then it would write the solution onto the screen or into a file. The problem is the script was running for an hour and it didn't seem like it would terminate anytime soon. And I didn't want to run all this thing again, uh, all the stuff again. So what I had to do, I had to take a debugger GDB to be precise, and I had to go into the process to extract the information that I need at this particular point in time. And then I can continue running the script. So this is what we're going to learn in this video today, a quite exotic thing, but you might need it at some point. And we're going to do it with an actual example with an actual use case, we're going to solve an algorithmic problem, we're going to do it in a very simple way The focus is not on the problem itself, the, fo the focus is on a mechanism of attaching a debugger. So the problem that we're going to solve is the knapsack problem. This is an NP hard problem, meaning it's not very easy to solve. You basically have to go into exponential runtime um, complexity issues. And the basic idea is you have a knapsack or a backpack with a certain capacity You have different items with different um, capacity they take away. So with a different size, and they have a certain value and you want to fill this knapsack with uh, the optimal configuration of items so that you exceed uh, so that you don't exceed the capacity and you have the maximum value. Now what we could do here is we could just use a naive approach and try to find uh, the optimal solution by trying all the solutions. And this is what we're going to do in this video today, just so I can show you a process that takes a lot of time. So we're going to start here first of all by importing random and by importing um, or actually by saying from iter tools import combinations. And we're going to set a seed. So we have a reproducible randomness here. And then we're going to say basically, we have a couple of items. And since I want to spend a lot of time doing this, I don't want it to be done like this, I'm going to generate a lot of items here randomly. So I'm going to say, we're going to have the name item, let's make this an F string item and some number, which is going to be I and then we're going to assign a random integer here between one and 10, which is going to be uh, the size and then we're going to have also the or the weight you could say and then we're going to also have um, the value of the item which is going to be between one and 20. This is what we want to maximize. And we're going to do that for i in range. And we want to have 200 items like this. So item one up until item 200. Those are just some items with values and I can print a couple of them here now maybe the first 10. You can see we have item one, which has a size of seven, item two also size of seven. Uh, what's the problem here? Oh, random, random, like this. Uh, you can see we have always a weight or size and then we have um, the value of the item. And now we want to find a configuration that doesn't exceed a maximum, let's use weight, not size, let's say the weight, the maximum weight we want to carry is 100 units, whatever the units are. So this is the problem I want to solve, I want to find the best configuration. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say best value equals zero, I'm going to say best combination is in the beginning an empty list. So we have nothing in a knapsack. And then I'm just going to say for I in range length items, plus one, the basic idea here being we can have one item in the, in the knapsack, two items, three, four, five, and so on. And we're just going to go through all the combinations. So for a combination, in combinations, and I'm going to say from the items, I want to pick I items, which is the outer loop. Again, the focus is not too much on the algorithm, which is why I'm rushing through it here. So don't focus too much on the functionality here. I'm just de de designing a script that works. Uh, we're going to say the total weight of this particular solution is going to be the sum of the following list item weight, 
for item in the combination. And then we're going to uh, say we also have a total value, which is going to be the exact same thing, but with index two. And then the only thing we want to do is if the total weight is less than or equal to the max weight and the total value exceeds the current value. So the best value, um, then what we want to do is we want to print that we have a new best solution. Now we're not going to print the solution itself, which again, we're modeling a mistake here. I'm assuming that this will be done in 10 seconds. Uh, and what I do is I just print when I have the best value, but I don't print the solution. So I just print the value. Um, I update the value best value being equal to total value and best combination being equal to combination. And my idea is that this will be done in 10 seconds, and I can just print the best combination. This is my idea. And of course, this will run a long time, especially when I go to 2000 instead of 200 uh, items. So best combination, best combination, and print, then best value is going to be best value. Like this. Okay, so that is my script now. And I made the mistake to assume that this is going to be done in 10 seconds, which of course, when I run this, you can see it keeps track of the solutions, but it keeps running and running. Um, and I don't know how long this is going to take definitely when I increase this to 500 or something, it will take almost forever. Um, but yeah, you have these different uh, solutions here. So or, or this process running here. Now what we want to do is let's say I'm running this already for two hours. So I don't want to just terminate it, but I don't have a solution here. So how do I get the solution out of the running program? And this is where the idea of attaching a debugger comes in. Now one thing that I want to mention right away is you can also use this in PyCharm. Uh, I've not used this myself, but you can go to run attach the process if you want to do it in PyCharm but I'm not familiar with that. I, would, I don't want to cover that because um, in my case, the configuration is not set up properly. We're going to do it with a command line tool called GDB. Now GDB is actually a C debugger, but we can also use it. Uh, I mean, it's not limited to C, but usually you use GDB for C debugging, but you can also use it, uh, use it to, de to debug Python scripts. So what we're going to do now is we're going to use a terminal, first of all, to install GDB. So you need to install the tool GDB. And you can also do this in the Linux uh, Windows subsystem for Linux in a WSL. If you're on Windows on Linux, you can just install GDB with your uh, package manager. And now we have to specify a process ID. Now to get the process ID off this particular process that we're running, we need to first run the process and get it. So we run the process, we go into the terminal, we use the command PS AUX, and then we use a pipe to grab everything that has to do with Python. And then you will see you have a bunch of processes here. And the one that I'm interested in is this one here, because it's running my main py file. So this here in my neural nine Python current directory. And this is the process ID of this particular process. So what I want to do now is I want to say sudo gdb dash p and this process ID. And what happens now is I'm in the process, I now attach this debugger to the process, you can see attaching to the process ID. So right now, this has stopped working. Now it didn't crash, I can continue with it. But now it has stopped working. So what I can do now is I can run Python commands the following way, I can run a uh, C level code here, I can say call. And then I can use this void uh, here in parentheses, and I can say pi run underscore, let me zoom into this a little bit pi run underscore simple string. And then here I can provide a string that is Python code. So for example, I can print here, the statement, hello, world, like this. Um, and when I run this, you can see in the command line down here, it prints hello world. So here in the Py, uh, PyCharm output, it prints hello world. And I can do this multiple times, I can basically just run Python code now. And of course, the problem I have is I see the score, but I don't see the solution. So what I can do is I can actually just go ahead and say print best combination. And when I do that, I get the result of the current configuration, which has apparently a score of 80, or a value of 80, you can see four items with value 20 each. So basically maximum value. Uh, and of course, the best solution would probably be five items uh, with value 20. But that is now the solution we currently have. And I can go even beyond that I can actually go ahead and say, Okay, I want to have a file stream. So I want to say, import pickle. 
And then what I want to do is I also want to say, okay, uh, the file pointer is open. And I want to open a file my list dot pickle in writing binary mode, or actually, we can just we don't even have to use pickle, we could but let's just go ahead and write this to a text file. So my list dot txt in writing mode. Um, so now I created a, a file pointer. And now what I can do is I can just write the content. So I can say f dot write maybe because the solution is too long for the output here in the command line. I just want to say f write. And what I want to write is a string version of best combination like this. And then hopefully, I would see my list and I think I would have to flush this right. Not sure. Yeah, there you go. So now we have the list or the combination written into a file. And you can do basically a lot of stuff like that. And this is even though it might seem like a unnecessarily complex thing, because you can just run it in debugging mode, there will be situations maybe at some point, where you have to go into a process that is already running. And if you want to continue, by the way, the process, you can just say continue. And then it's going to continue running this uh, script, it at some point will probably find solutions like 81, 82, there you go, it continues. And now I can stop this again by just using control C signal interrupt, and I can do the same thing, I can print again, the solution, which is the best combination. And now it's a different one here, as you can see. So yeah, I think this is a very useful thing to do. Of course, in the end, what you want to do is you want to detach. So I want to say detach like this, uh, then it's going to continue. And then I can also terminate it here. So yeah, this is how you can attach a debugger to a running Python process to get some information out of it. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.